Yeah, um, my name is Maya, and this one's, um, I wrote this like a couple weeks ago, and it's called Jessica. Eyes that glimmer with temptation, a mouth that curves at the thoughts of the boys walking behind her, a full chest that screams the glory of Eve, stomach smooth like an African plateau, hips that sway to the rhythm of lust as a group of people sing along to that same song, legs that go for miles that lead up to the common man's metaphorical medallion. Her name is Jessie. And I have never met her. But I have heard the whispers of the ones who hate her, the ones who love her, and the ones who would simply just like to mate with her. Since I have not seen the truth, I will believe that everything that I hear are lies. But you know something? I think I know Jessie. I think I know Jessie just fine. I know that Jessie does not feel pretty. I know she remembers the, pray the playground where she cried, where Bertrand Finley used to pop her bra shafts that not only scarred her shoulders, but her heart. She remembers the fat finger that waved in her face and pointed at her frizzy hair. And she remembers his demonic and deep laugh because it haunted her for nights. And that was the first time that she ever felt like a slave to a man. Then there was that basketball player who was tall, who was handsome, whose hands made her feel beautiful. He looked at her like he loved her. But when she refused to take off that same bra, he walked out on her. And she remembers shaking against her bed sheets, <coughs> leaving him drunken voicemails, begging him to come back because she thought she was in love with him. Then there was the boy in the leather jacket who only smiled when he looked at her. I am a beautiful, talented, wonderfully destined and intellectual woman. I am not phased by your perceptions or my imperfections. I do not allow the mistakes of my past to vote my future. Much like the accusations that you make, the comparisons that you create, the divisions in my conscience and my past do not mold who I'll be in my future for heaven's sakes. You cannot make me who, who you have decided that I am. Simply by making the decision, by creating in yourself a vision of who you have decided that I am going to be, I am not shaped by you. I am a woman, I am a daughter, I have been a child and I have seen every second of who I am. And yet, still I do not truly know who I am. I am shaped every day by the things that brush and crush against me as they pass they leave a trace of energy within my soul that creates within me a better heart. A heart that is filled with more passion, whether the interaction was positive or negative, it has taught me to embrace the joy that I have inside. For one who travels with a negative spirit travels with an unfortunate view. Like the rose that tumbled its way out of the shackles of its own thorns, determined to be beautiful, I will rise. As I fly high in the green, green skies, soaring higher past my past, I will rise. You cannot mold me into the person that you want me to be because I am the spirit of the person that God created me to be. I am not your project. I am not your trial. I am me and I will rise. And when I get there, fuck you if you already excused yourself from the table. Fuck you if you shit on my One table. One of the worst feelings in the world is the inability to feel. Yet my peers glorify this show no love train, which is really just a blend of fear and conceit. Conceit because you think your feelings are more important than everyone else's and that everyone else should cater to you by centering their world around everything. <coughs> but it's fear because you're afraid to get hurt, so you hurt the ones who will love you first. I actually find it kind of funny. We measured our worth in terms of money, we made our happiness dependent on meaningless relationships, and we judged our character based on how many people want to get with us. Yet, we wonder why we're never satisfied with life. Wonder why I always feel overwhelmed with strife. Wonder why it feels like your heart's playing catch with a knife because every time it finally heals itself, it feels like it's getting hurt by something else. Sorry. And at school, when I try to concentrate, the only problem I can contemplate is how many tears does it take to make a heart break? Or how many breaks can a heart take from love before it can only fake love? You see, my generation forsakes love, claims to hate love, but is always so willing to take love from the first person to claim love despite the fact that it's not the same love they dreamed of. And why do they do it? Not to say that they love, but to say that they've been loved. But with so many people wanting to be loved, I just don't understand why so many people ignore the Father above trying to substitute a relationship with God with a humanly love. You want that he'll die for me type love, and he did that before you were born. He has that I'll never leave your side type love, but for some reason you're still torn between him and the world. But what you don't understand is that if you seek a relationship with God, everything else will fall into place. 
and you'll lose that urge to chase love and fake love. You'll learn to embrace love, reciprocate love, but most importantly, wait for love, so that love is pain will no longer be your mentality, and you'll know. So that love is pain will no longer be a reality, and you'll no longer be a victim to the showing love mentality. You <laughs>